Good morning and uh, welcome to our, our latest webinar using Near Me for Care Home Reviews. Uh, we're going to be learning from the Pathfinders on the improvement collaborative that took place recently within social work departments in Scotland. Um, we're going to be uh, joined by a panel of, of our colleagues today and um, we would very much like uh, to find out a little bit more about you as our audience. So you will see uh, a Q&A uh, tab on your screen. It would be great if you could um, put in there what profession you are and, and whereabouts you're joining us from within Scotland. Um, also, we would very much like to have uh, some interaction with you during our session today. So again, if you would like to um, put comments in the chat, uh, and, and any uh, ideas or, or uses of near me that you've you've come across if you've been using that that'd be super to hear um, our session will be recorded today so you can share this with colleagues afterwards who weren't able to attend or you can watch certain aspects of it again and um, we'll be sharing links through the chat uh, throughout the session and also some resources at the end related to the work that's been going on around uh, using near me in care home reviews so I'm going to just run through a bit of housekeeping so you're all joining us on mute this morning um, you'll see the q a section uh, in your um, page there the three dots that are also on your menu there that will give you some accessibility options so if you need to pin or highlight certain presenters then you can do that also it will enable you to activate um, the subtitles if those are helpful for you and again if you do at any point lose sound or lose vision please leave the meeting and rejoin and this will often uh, help you get back on or move to somewhere where there's better Wi-Fi or if you're able to, if you can physically connect to a network with an Ethernet cable, for example, that might give you a better experience. So I'm, I'm delighted. To, uh, my name is Mark Bezik. I'm the National League for the Naming Network. I should introduce myself earlier. So I'm joined by my colleagues today, Dawn Rob, who's the Program Manager for the Naming Network and also Rosie Cooper, who's the National Quality Improvement Lead. We're also being supported by Dr. Tom Garden this morning, who is producing the event from the VC team in NHS Scotland. We have a, a cracking lineup for you of people from um, the, uh, the world of, of social work. Um, we're gonna be hearing from uh, Philip Gillespie from the Office of the Chief Social Work Advisors and a number of, of colleagues from Glasgow City and um, Angus, regarding their work using Near Me in uh, Care Home Reviews. So here's what we're going to be looking at this morning. So we're going to do uh, hopefully a brief from the Office of the Chief Social Work Advisor, Philip Gillespie, then a bit of introduction about what Near Me is, um, what we did and where we're going. We're going to hear from presentations from the two services that have been uh, piloting this with us and then some information around scaling up locally as terms of next steps. We've got plenty of time for Q&A, hopefully with our panel and Rosie and Dawn will be collating that and then we'll do a quick summary at the end. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just check with, with Tom, our producer now to see whether Philip is here for us yet. If not, we will go to Dawn who will uh, kick off for us. So I'm gonna just check in with uh, Tom. Have we got Phil in yet? Uh, <clears throat> not yet. I've asked him to contact me. OK, so with, with, with that in mind, what we'll do then um, is we'll switch to Dawn. So if Dawn, are you good to go? And then hopefully we'll pick up Philip a little bit later on. Yeah, that's fine. Hi, everyone. Uh, I was going to say it's great to see so many people in the webinar, but I can't see you. This is all very strange for me. Uh, so I'm Dawn Robb and I'm Programme Manager working on a Near Me programme with my colleague Rosie Cooper's improvement lead as well. Next, please. So if this is the first time you've heard of Near Me, it is a video consulting tool that is a purpose-built platform to support client workflow. Now it's easy to use, there's no need to download anything, it is simply accessed via a web browser, therefore can be accessed on a wide range of devices. Now Near Me is secure, a client's details are completely purged after the call has taken place. So how can Near Me support care home reviews? Next slide, please, Mark. Great. So it can reduce 
footfall within the care home. Near Me also allows three-way call-in to allow others to join the call as well. So that could be family members coming in to join remotely or anyone else who wants to be part of that review. Staff who are shielding can continue to do can continue to do reviews as well remotely. It can reduce travel. So for example, out of area reviews that can sometimes take a two hour road trip, these reviews can be done remotely if appropriate. It's also an opportunity for digital upscaling within social care and care homes. We have also been linking in with the Connect in Scotland programme to ensure care home have devices as well. So I just wanted to share a graph with you. Thanks, Mark. Uh, so near me is used within health and social care, third sector and now local authorities. So last year we had 300 consultations per week. Now we're sitting at about 22,000 per week, which has been just a massive increase. So I just want to go through some information about how we actually did this. So of the six Pathfinder areas, we set up a rapid improvement cycle over six weeks. And this focused on these three step models, so technical, individual training and service processes. Now, this model has been used within other services to embed near me as well. So the technical setup access to Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, Apple Safari, having the right equipment, so your webcam, speakers or headset if necessary, and having a near me waiting area and account set up ready to use near me. The national video conferencing team have all the resources about training. So they've got some great YouTube videos they are only a couple of minutes long and they also offer drop in sessions. Ness has have also produced some training via the tourists as well platform. We also did some demos with the Pathfinder area. So one on one demos on near me just to get people really comfortable and confident in using near me. So the technical and training was all completed prior the QI webinars actually started to ensure we were focusing on service processes. So everyone was at the exact same starting point. Also using Near Me prior helped the Pathfinder areas develop their process maps as they understood how it worked and the functions within it. And the process maps can then be shared with colleagues, developed and refined if necessary and also can help with upscaling as well because you've got that great template of how you embedded near me within your service and we'll actually hear from one of the team today on their process map. Next slide please Mark. So where are we now? So of the six Pathfinder sites, five have undertaken reviews. Process maps have been developed, taken into account the following factors. So the criteria for using near me is it appropriate or is a face to face needed or another method? How is the preparation information gathered prior the review? So is this sent in advance from the care home or is the care home staff going through some of the key notes before the appointment actually takes place with the resident? How and what information is sent to others joining? So this could be family members. What information are you sending them? We've got resources on information leaflets with the link into the waiting areas that's sent or an email or even a phone call beforehand to say we're going to do it this way. And how are notes taken during the review as well? So our student social workers brought in for complex cases. Also looking at any technical issues. So if there's a large group, possibly putting the microphone on mute and using the refresh button, if the quality of the picture goes or the sound starts to affect, making sure that that a refresh button is used. OK, thanks, Mark. Thank you. Thank you, Dawn, for that, for uh, kind of setting the scene and the, the background of near me. Um, I'm going to just uh, check in again with Tom to see whether we've got Philip with us yet or not. So just bear with us a minute. Not yet. We're working on it. OK, thank you, Tom. I think what we'll do then, we'll move over on to uh, Glasgow City now. So what I'd like to do is introduce the team from Glasgow City. And I think uh, Janice is going to be the first person speaking for the team. So uh, I'll, over to you, Janice. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Mark. Um, 
Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to this session um, at, from Glasgow City's uh, perspective. So um, I, I'm going to very, very quickly introduce the slides for you for, from our from our um, slideshow this, uh, this morning. Um, I've, I'm joined with my colleagues Shuba Ayer, who's a social worker in our team, uh, Mark Morrison, who's a senior officer in business development, and Mark's going to talk you through our um, process map that we've developed. We've got Karen Lockhart, who would have been joining us this morning. She's had a bit of technical difficulty, but hopefully she'll be able to join us by the end of the call. And myself, I'm a service manager for quality assurance for the residential care homes. Um, Mark, next slide, please. So in terms of the, the use of Near Me for us within Glasgow City Health and Social Care Partnership, you will all understand that the Scottish Government have challenged us with um, to, to complete statutory reviews for all of our residents living within our care homes within the, uh, the previous six month period. Um, that, that in itself is a challenge for our care home sector, given the, um, the difficulties and the things that they faced in the previous year, as you can all imagine. But equally, we have to understand that the uh, pandemic and lockdown from March of last year has had a significant impact on us being able to um, access and, uh, and support or allow other um, professionals to um, attend meetings or enter our buildings. So we've had to be extremely careful about that. And that's meant that external scrutiny was really pretty much unachievable, although it was essential, particularly in, in the review of people's care within the care homes at that time. So the, the opportunity to use Near Me has been seen as an alternative for us and being able to uh, support uh, an alternative method of um, holding these reviews and to reduce th those face to face contacts as much as we possibly can. And then and so for us, the opportunity again to use Near Me has been seen as something that we can do in terms of our APIS improvement cycle and a test of change where we've used two uh, local care homes within Glasgow City um, to, uh, to access the Near Me technologies. Um, we've used a very small sample, which Shuba will talk you through just shortly. Um, and then I'll come back to explain what that, that felt like from the care home's perspective. Um, and equally, Mark has developed that, uh, our process map, which will be shared with everyone today, but if it's a, um, of assistance to folks. Um, so from that point of view, that gives us our strategic context overall as to where we um, expect to go and what we would look to do is we look to scale up. Um, so I'm now going to hand you over to Mark Morrison from our team who's going to talk you through the, um, the, the wider um, process map. That slide I think is just a duplicate mark in terms of the, yeah, okay, yeah. So we're looking to just share with yourselves today the aspects of what we're looking, that, what we've done. And um, as I say, Mark, Mark's now going to talk you through that process map. Good morning, everyone. So I was just sharing my, my screen there. Um, so I'm Matt Morrison. I work for Glasgow HSDP's business development team. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the high level process map which we've developed for a pilot and undertaking care home reviews using Near Me. Um, we've got a lot to fit in in today's session, um, so this will be a quick run through. Um, but as Janice says, the process maps will be made, uh, made available for anyone that, that wants to refer back to them in a wee bit more detail and a wee bit more time. So as you can see, in terms of the process map, um, the top swim lane here is uh, responsibilities for the care home management team. And as we move down, we'll see that we also have a separate swim lane for social worker responsibilities. So I'm just going to give you a quick run through of the process map. So we start off here. Care home review is required to establish service is still meeting needs. The care home management team will then identify residents who require review. And what you'll see is through this process map, there's bullet points at certain stages. These are good reminders of things that you may want to consider at each stage. So at this stage, you maybe want to consider who's going to be identifying the residents and how will that be done. We then come to a decision. So is near me suitable for the resident? So some considerations here for the care home management team are um, care home to decide if near me is suitable for the resident. And the care home and the social worker will need to decide if near me is suitable for any other attendees. And the care home will need to confirm if the resident has access to a, a suitable device, internet and web browser, etc. And they'll also need to make sure that any other attendees are tech ready. And within Glasgow, that will be a joint decision between the care home and the social worker. 
So if near me is deemed not suitable, then um, we need to defer to our as is process. However, we may want to consider if a limited part of the review can be completed using near me. If near me is suitable, then the care home management team will send the residents information over to the social worker. So again, here we want to consider what info we're going to be sharing and how we're going to share it with the social worker. So we're now going to move down to the social worker's swim lane. So first of all, we want to make sure that the social worker um, is tech ready. So that will uh, include making sure they've got a suitable device, a suitable web browser, internet connection, and of course, that they have the correct access to near me. The social worker will then schedule the review and invite attendees. So quite a lot to consider here. So how are we going to send the invite? Um, who's going to send the invite? What information are we going to include in the invite template? For example, the date and time of the review, uh, the patient leaflet, uh, and all, also how to request test call or support. How long are we going to schedule the review for? How will we identify attendees? Um, who will ident identify attendees? And again, who does the social worker link in with the care home to arrange a suitable date and time for the review? Um, again, just reaffirming that we need to make sure that other attendees are tech ready and um, maybe consider if we're going to be sharing any documents during the meeting and uh, or sending those um, before the review. And at this stage, the process splits. So we'll continue with the social worker's role here. So the social worker will schedule and complete any test calls that are required in advance of the review. And then they'll gather any information required. So again, we want to consider what info is required and from who. And at the same time, if we move back up to the care home management side, at the same time, they're going to be looking to book a room, a device, and making sure that there's staff available um, to facilitate the review. So again, we may want to consider if there's more than one review being carried out at the care home on the same day, we need to make sure that we've got a process for transitioning between residents. And of course, then the care home um, management team will facilitate the review and support the resident. So we then come together in the review, and I'll just move our screen along. So we're now, uh, the review is now taking place and there's quite, a, again, a lot to consider here. So who's going to be responsible for est establishing consent and how are we going to do that? And um, we want to agree a process if connection fails or the resident changes their mind. And um, we want to agree meeting etiquette and format. And we also need to consider what's the process going to be if the social, work, the social worker is absent from work. There's also a wide range of things that we need to think about in terms of the virtual waiting area set up. Um, so at Dawn and our team will will likely cover that with you, but there's a there's a whole lot of um, guidance available to kind of talk you through that. Once the review's um, taken place, the social worker will then record and share a summary and outcomes of the review. So things you want to consider here is you know what information is going to be recorded. We need to uh, update our relevant IT systems. We need to save any documentation to our document management systems, uh, and we need to consider who is info going to be shared with and how are we going to share that info with them after the review has been completed. And then we move back up to the care home management side where they're going to update the care plan and complete any actions from the review. So that kind of covers our process map. As I said before, it's going to be shared after um, today's seminar and I'm going to hand you over to our social worker Shuba, who's going to give you a wee bit more information on her experience in conducting the five reviews within the pilot. Good morning, and am I live? Yes, you're good to go, Shuba. Oh, good morning, everybody. Hi there. Uh, I'll basically share what I did in the pilot. We were asked to do. Can I have the slides, Mark? Bear with me, I'm just going to. Bear with me a minute. Hi there, yeah. So um, my part of the entire thing in the pilot was basically we tested it, we used it and we learned from it. So three basic parts into our entire piloting. And what I did was I did reviews in one local authority and five service users from the same local authority. But just for my own experience, I also did one private uh, care home resident review to see if there was a difference and there was a huge uh, difference. But I will not cover that as part of today's piloting because that is a totally different process and you know it will involve a lot more technical aspects. Um, the total um, 
um, where residents we reviewed what four service users as uh, six service users. So four service users had capacity to participate and express their views. Two of them were subjected to AWI legislation and powers. But despite these differentiations, it's basically about tech friendliness. So in terms of participation, only one of the service users and she was from the private care home um, review fully participated in the entire care review in terms of you know answering all the questions relating to the care plan and what's you know what's best meeting her needs, what's not working and things like that. But otherwise it was basically the care home uh, staff who were providing these inputs with um, the service users only participating when questions were asked to them. Um, so the, in terms of the cameras used, uh, the uh, number of cameras used at a time varied between two to four. The capacity is up to six cameras can be used is what we were told, but I could only test it to a maximum of four. Um, so we usually had a care home a camera from the care home. We had social worker uh, camera. We had a camera from families um, usually. So usually it was three. And the service user from the care home normally participated along with the service uh, care home staff, and it was just one camera covering both of them. And both of them were socially distancing for the current requirements. So uh, with that, it was so the range was between two and four, and um, uh, most participants were from Glasgow. Only in one of the private care home review, I had a rare, I had a family member from London. So in that particular review private care home, I had two uh, family members from two locations participating, but one was England and one was Glasgow. In terms of time, the range of time was because it was local authority care homes, it ranged from between 25 minutes of the whole review to about 45 minutes. But in the private care home, it lasted about one hour, 20 minutes. That's where the processes are different, you know, and that's what we need to establish for private care homes separately. Um, next slide. Yeah, so uh, basically to uh, run through the thing, all the all the um, pilot um, which uh, we tried, every um, participant, we had to first test the Near Me app prior to the actual review and that helped them to confidently be part of the actual review on the day. So that testing was required. Um, we also um, looked at what worked well and the best part of the um, uh, use of near me is that it did not have anything to download but it is the testing actually that had a lot to do because we had to see if the web browser was appropriate what technical issues we had some of them could not do it with their phones and some of them could not do it with certain devices so we had to really work all these out before we could actually get to it working so what went well is that once we knew how it worked we all we had to do was you know just connect and then the connection it was it was like any other video call and it was very simple um and what the purpose of the thing was not the use of near me the purpose of the entire uh, thing was the meeting the review meeting and that was what we achieved we were in what replaced a face-to-face -face, uh, interview was and uh, this use of near me and we really were able to achieve the outcomes of the review and that's the good part of the, uh, the benefit of using the near me this is uh, decisions and actions were agreed following the review as in all reviews we were obviously able to summarize and decide who's going to do what and what needed to be done going forward it's a good alternative to face to face and even families who are especially the family from England who joined he was absolutely delighted. He had no clue how his mom was doing in the care home and then this was an opportunity to hear her speak and participate. So it really felt like actually having a face to face uh, kind of meeting. So in many ways it did help. Um, so this, all of them, all of the care home staff and families and uh, myself, I, all three of us th thought it was very positive because until the use of me or me, I was using a telephone conversation. So we could not see each other and there were limitations about that. Um, the, there was opportunity to share, but see, I also had in one particular case, what I did was we didn't have the reports in time, but I had summarized some of the information I gathered in the client and I had the ability to use that slide the same way you use in Microsoft, you can also use as you know your documents just for the others to see in terms of what you are talking about in terms of the care plan. So that opportunity is also there. 
the project has helped us to adapt, adapt and then learn from it. And as a process of this whole test and trial, we were able to establish a clear process. And that's what Mark had just shared with you. So that's the benefits. And these are the things that work very well. The last slide is what we think of the limitations. I personally think the limitations are not huge and I think the benefits are um, far more than the limitations. Um, because near me is not appropriate for all. If service users and uh, you know participants are not able to be tech friendly, that's one of the gaps. So in terms of the number of service users, as I said, it's not about capacities. Some of the service users were unable to connect with all the people in the video because they're not used to using technology. So they would only connect to their family member. They're not even able to get an eye contact with me as a social worker, for example. Sometimes I was introducing myself for the first time as the social worker who was carrying out a review. So these were some of the gaps. I think that's what we need to make sure that, you know, this will take time for people to get used to and not everybody it's going to be relevant to. And then in the particular instance where we use the four cameras, sound quality did seem to be affected. We don't know what the exact reason were, but at that point we didn't know we could mute the sound from our end. And we were told that if we try that, probably the sound quality would be better because we use only four, four videos and we can use up to six videos is what we were told. So we still need to test and try out and learn from these um, trials. And we were unable to use um, for in the pilot. Unfortunately, although we had organized for someone from abroad to participate, the person could not actually come on the day of the meeting. So we missed that um, in our pilot. But overall, I would really think that the benefits are, are far more than the limitations, and we can work through the limitations over a period of time. Thank you, and I'll pass you to Janice, who will share the care home part of their uh, what their experience was. Thank you, Shuba. So I'm going to talk you through some of your reflections from the perspective of Victoria Gardens Care Home, who, uh, which is an HSCP run care home um, here in Glasgow City. Um, so for, from our point of view, certainly the, the, within the context of COVID-19, it meant that, as I said before, our, our care, care homes were in lockdown and we had to think about other ways to maintain communication and maintain contact with our relatives and families. Um, we had done that through different types of technology, such as um, FaceTime, etc., in informal ways, but to actually carry out a robust and safe um, place to carry out a review, then the opportunity to um, near me has been really quite positive for us. Um, it's given us a flexibility to support privacy and um, the use of the virtual waiting areas we found to be really helpful because that meant that we were able to bring people in at the right time to, uh, in the conversation and, and when we were having the review itself. Um, and, and in that sense, it felt far more person centred. So the approach overall um, was, was far uh, more meaningful in terms of the contact that families were able to have. I think as Shuba said, actually having that um, eye to eye type contact was really quite helpful for families when they've been so distanced from us over the, the, the previous year, uh, despite everything that the, the um, every measure that we've taken. And equally, we've, we've all, we're always seeking to reduce any unnecessary footfall within our buildings, even with the new open with care guidance that's, that we're now working to, to support meaningful contact for our residents and families. Um, it still means that if we can avoid uh, unnecessary um, reasons or, or, or people coming into our buildings that we would want to continue to do that. So near me has given us that chance to be able to um, do some of the preparatory work for a review even beforehand via this system and then also the actual formal review itself means that we don't have to have as many people in our buildings as we, we might have had to have had for a review. Um, it means that we can be far more inclusive with their families um, if they've been unable to travel. Again, as I think as Shuba said, she did have that contact um, with someone from London, but we would anticipate being able to expand that further. We're already speaking to families who live in the United States and in Europe that would be really keen to um, participate in this programme and, and work with us to, uh, to be able to attend a review. And that, that, that's an opportunity that they've really never been given before so that that's certainly seen as a benefit um, and it's a 
definitely an opportunity to um, ensure a level of transparency. We'd already been using Near Me with the Care Inspectorate to support some um, contact with their Care Inspectorate officer within Victoria Gardens and being able to use the video functions it means that we can show people around we can give virtual tours effectively and it also as I say means that the the relative is able to actually physically see their their um their, their loved one as such uh, that and the other element I think that's really important and is pe very person-centered about the use of near me in this regard is the fact that um for some people um, living with dementia or other cognitive um, impairments then that means that they're able to um get that face to face contact and and um, that that it seems to be easier for them to communicate through other than uh, via telephone and we'd been using teleconferencing previous to this and found that that was very difficult for for um, our residents in particular um, so a, a final point for me would be the the pre-planning that the care home has um, had to do uh, um, in advance of any of the reviews actually taking place. We, what we've done is developed a, a system, a spreadsheet, where we can gather information about the, each of our residents and their preferred methods of communication and how um, you and me may be able to assist them because I think um, it's it's not a one size fits all and to be person led on those reviews then you absolutely have to think about the the needs of and the communication needs of the the residents and their families um so it may be that some people can completely use near me others might need a blended approach and some of the preparatory work or the review itself can be done in near me but there may need to be some level of face-to-face -face meetings and for others, it will absolutely mean that we, we can't use near me. And, and I think to have that in advance means that you can then look at focusing the, the technology to be used for the right people at the right time. Um, so I, I believe that Karen, our, our colleagues still have difficulty being able to join us. So if I could ask Mark for the next slide, I'll just move us on to our next steps. So within our HSCP, what we would like to be able to do is consider how we move forward with this pilot. There's, a, a, um, I think, as again, as Shuba has, has said, that the benefits certainly outweigh any of the limitations of the system, and we would be seeking to use it more um, as we progress the, the review activity within the wider care home sector in Glasgow. Um, and so we will continue to use it as an engagement tool um, to engage with our service users, their families and staff. Um, we need to think about the resourcing for that. Um, there, there is certainly a resource implication to do this level of review activity, given um, the, the, the work that's been required to almost catch up with ourselves because of the pandemic in the past um, year and the, 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 dif the difficulties that we have had in being able to support care home reviews uh, over that time. So there is a bit of catch up, which is resource intensive. So we are uh, engaging with our um, student social workers to be able to give them opportunities to um, participate in this wider programme with us. Um, and that comes from uh, the, a, a direction of travel from the leadership, from the ex executive sponsor of this project for, for us in the HSCP is our chief social work officer, Jackie Kerr, and from the wider organisation itself that, that we will uh, commit to doing this, this work. Um, we do need technology to actually participate in it. Obviously, people need access to um, the internet. They need access to um, devices such as iPads or computers to be able to, to do that, whether that be the resident's own family member or the within the care home itself. And again, we're working with the national programme to ensure that people have got access to appropriate technologies and developing a lending scheme effectively to allow that to happen, to support um, families to engage as meaningfully as they can through near me. Again, there, there's a level of tech support um, that, and, and, and readiness for the, the test. Shuba was absolutely up the middle of getting her head around how the tech itself would actually work, but that needs to now be widened across the rest of the social work team. And there is a level of admin support absolutely required. Um, there's also the preparatory work um, that, ha that is um, admin intensive within the care home itself. For our test within Victoria Gardens, we were able to share all of our, our own reviews and documentation with Shuba in advance of the review itself um, because we have the appropriate access to the information through our um, 
easier MS system. But clearly, when we open this out to the wider sector, that will be that will be a particular challenge for us. So again, we need to think about how we do that and consideration of sharing information under GDPR. And um, next slide, Mark. So that, that's us. It's just to thank you for your time and attention this morning. And I'm going to hand you now back to, to Mark for the next part of the presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, the team from Glasgow It's really good to hear that, that logical process that you, you've managed to put together that's applicable to so many other areas um, and some honest reflections of how things have gone and what the challenges were and, and to enable that person centeredness and to engage with families that are miles and miles away was a really, really excellent example. Uh, and again, it's it's good to hear your aspirations for the future as well in terms of you know where near me it can take you. So what I'd like to do next is introduce uh, Fiona Johnson to you, who's the care manager from our Broth community care team, and she's going to give you a, a quick rundown of the project they did there. So are you are ready to go, Fiona? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Hi there, so my name is Fiona Johnson. Um, as Mark says, I'm one of the care managers in the older people team based in Arbroath in the Angus area in North East Scotland. Um, this is actually our second trial of Near Me. We had a, a spell of about six or seven weeks um, sort of before Christmas where we tried using Near Me in one of our local authority care homes in um, Seaton Grove. Um, we have five members of staff in our team, five care managers. One is part time, works just two days a week. Um, and some people live locally in the town. Others live just sort of outside in the country. We're all using different tech. Um, some people live in different counties completely. So we've had quite a quite a challenge with with getting it sort of rolled out to everybody um, and working really well, I suppose. Um, that first spell, as I say, we worked with our local authority care home, Seaton Grove, um, who has access to the same IT um, department as us. But this, this um, the trial that we used this time for sort of three or four weeks was with a private nursing home um, called Antiquary. So they've been quite interesting to compare um, how the different care homes hold their reviews. Um, the number of residents is quite different and the needs of the, the, the residents are also quite different. Um, so as I say, we've got um, about five, we've got five care managers in our team. In this trial, particularly with Antiquary Nursing Home, we completed between somewhere about six to eight reviews, um, mostly with staff and with families rather than residents in this particular home. Um, I myself completed three reviews there. Um, somebody who was receiving end of life care, so that was um, quite a, a particular set of questions we needed to ask with that compared to other people that were having really long term care that had been there for a number of years. Um, some of the positives we had from the reviews we held was the family participation as, as staff from Glasgow have um, alluded to as well. It's been really good to have families involved um, that maybe wouldn't be able to come into the homes just now or wouldn't be able to, to travel into the Angus area. We've had family members from other parts of Angus, um, from Glasgow actually, um, as well involved in the video calls and they've gone really quite well. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to involve residents in any of these ones. It was just the particular set of residents that came up being due their reviews um, weren't able to be you know using video facilities the levels of dementia or poor health meant that it didn't really seem very appropriate they weren't these residents weren't communicating with their families using video technology it hadn't worked or they'd felt uncomfortable with it so all of these reviews were were carried out just with um the care manager and the staff and, and family where possible um the feedback we had from the care setting was that they they really liked using near me um, we were able to get it set up on just ahead of our first review really quite quickly. It was really quite straightforward to get it set up. We had a couple of wee difficulties with the computer, so we moved it onto an iPad so that they could move closer to connection and then it, it worked sort of straight away. Um, we were able to get the manager of the care home involved as well. She she wanted to be involved in a couple of the reviews to see how, how they were being held um, and what information was able to get across. And we actually found that um, as staff from a care management side, we were meeting some of the nurses in this care home for the first time. So that was quite interesting. It was quite nice to 
to get to see people's faces of people we'd been speaking to for months by then um, and develop relationships a bit better. Um, other positives, I suppose, is, is getting to see families again. There's, there's quite a lot of these, the, the residents that we were doing reviews from have maybe sat with another care manager before, so they've sort of transferred over to a new care manager. So we've perhaps not met the family or the resident before. Um, we've had quite a lot of phone contact, of course, with a lot of people over the past year, but um, generally people who are in long term care placements, we don't have very much contact with the resident or the care home or the family. It's sort of just for the, you know, the, the care home will support that person, communicate with the families themselves and they just sort of get in touch with our team if there's concerns or falls or hospital admissions. Um, so if you've got somebody that's been quite stable for the last year, we've maybe not had very much contact. Um, we are looking at sort of expanding our use of Near Me as we go forward. There's a couple of members of the team that are, are yet to become a bit more confident with using the system. So we're encouraging that. Um, what, one of our members of staff, the part time member of staff, actually lives in Fife. So she's trying not to travel into Angus if possible. And she's managed to use Near Me as part of reviews with private providers um, providing personal care services at home. Um, that's she's been able to use that um, for getting in touch with a provider involving district nursing team, community alarm, call out responders. Um, and that's really helping to get a team approach for supporting people in the local community ahead of moving into a care setting to try and get that sort of early intervention and build relationships before we're looking at a move into care. We're also looking at using um, uh, near me as part of the MDT's multidisciplinary team meetings with medical professionals in the local hospital, perhaps with Nine Wells in Dundee, um, to save us having to travel through into the next local authority, and certainly expanding near me into the other care homes we have locally. So we have seven care homes in our both, three are nursing, three are residential, and one local authority residential home. So. As I've said and touched on before, the, the trial we used last year was with our local authority home and this was with a, a nursing care home. So they've been quite different, um, but we are now starting to arrange some reviews with some of the other care homes locally to see um, if they if they feel the benefits of using that system as well. So I think largely we've had a, a really positive experience with it. Um, certainly the second time around with a, a private nursing home with a lot more residents, that's meant that a lot more reviews are, are due or just coming up. So we've been able to participate a lot more um, in the trial and you know complete a lot more reviews and we're looking forward to carrying that on. Thank you very much, Fiona. That's really good to get that perspective from you, from you in terms of family involvement and, and offering that choice and the suitability. It's not for everybody, but look, finding out the cases that it does work really well for and, and great to hear that you're using it to support staff travel as well and, and efficient use of their time. So that's excellent. So um, I'm just conscious of time for folk now. Um, I'm going to just check in with uh, Tom and Dawn to see whether we're going to have Dawn next in terms of the local scale up or somebody from the Chief Social Worker's office? Not yet. OK, Tom. So uh, Dawn, uh, can you jump in and do a quick roundup of the local scale up, please? Yeah, of course I can. If you can go to next slide, please. Yeah. There you go. Thanks, Dawn. Thank you. So all the path finder areas have now completed tech set up and developed processes and that they've tested with different variables including family members and complex cases as well and increasing those calls. So now we are a local spread and how can we support you? We already have weekly calls with the Pathfinder areas and what we'd like to do is bring in some of the colleagues who's involved in your local spread plan into those meetings uh, so we can try and support in any way that we can and having the Pathfinder areas on that call as well can be the subject matter experts as well to help shape how they've learned how things are going for them and we are here as well to help support that too. We're also drafting the care home review guidance as well so hopefully that will be out shortly 
And we can also offer a follow up we webinar if that is what people would like. More than happy to arrange that. In terms of who can help locally, there's been a range of people that's been involved in scale up. So we've had tech leads, project support, near me leads, uh, business support as well, a wide range, and also engaging with care home and social workers as well. So the that's that is where we are at the moment, uh, which is really exciting. Thanks, Mark. OK, thank you, Dawn. That's excellent. Just to give us a, a flavour of, of um, how we can then support services to take this forward. So um, I'm, I'm just conscious that we 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 want to make time for some Q&A and um, we're struggling to get um, the, the uh, social work office uh, folk in. So I think while we're busying away with that still, um, what I'd like to do now is uh, just hand over to Dawn and Rosie and just to see what kind of themes have come out from the Q&A and, and the particular questions directed to any certain other the presenters. So I'll just hand over to, to Dawn and Rosie and, and just see um, what's on the Q&A. Thank you. Thank, thanks, Mark. Um, that's great. Well, we've got one question. Um, one, it's actually a generic question. I wonder whether I should pose it to Dawn or Mark. And this was um, it's a question with regarding to um, how how using sorry, challenges or actually um, how you get around using near me for um, perhaps visually impaired um, clients or patients. So um, Dawn, any thoughts? Yeah, I'm happy to answer that. Uh, so we did do a, an EQIA, a quality and diversity in, um, impact assessment. So that is available on the tech website. And within that as well, it is highlighting some of the areas uh, that we do need to do a deep dive into those barriers to try and see if we can get any solutions out of that. Um, so that's that's one thing that we can that we are looking into as well and they have set the colours etc on near me to make sure that it is appropriate for people if they do have any visual impairments. Mark I don't know if you want to add anything else to that. No I just know it's something that's that's that attend anyway that the people that, that build uh, the, the, the near me uh, side of things then that's yeah, it is, it is an element that they're aware of and I'm looking at ways of enabling that to happen uh, in terms of things like screen readers as well, you know, those kind of, kind of technologies. So this is all recognised as, 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 as an issue for accessibility, but, but they're looking at solutions for that. So. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Dawn. So um, we've got a question here and um, specifically for Shuba. So obviously what you described was um, the, the care home you're working with was a health and social care partnership um, um, care home. So I'm just one. We we're just wondering: Are you envisaging the process being different for private care homes or third sector care homes? Well, in terms of the actual use of near me, it will not be different. But what has happened is because we have a, a well, like what uh, Janice highlighted was local authority care homes and ourselves have a tie up in such a way that we are able to access records from each other very quickly. That doesn't happen in a local authority in a private care home. In a private care home, we have no access to records prior to the, uh, prior to the review. So what happened is it took one hour, 20 minutes for me to run through the care plan, get information from the care staff about how things are with regard to the care plan. So that's really taking a lot of time. So we have to streamline with private care homes a process which will involve them giving us these records prior to the review, which has not been streamlined as yet. And that is the part we need to do. Once we have that, we can cut short the actual time of the review. If we have access to these records and even family are able to see this prior to the meeting, then we are not spending that much time asking these questions. Thank you very much, Shuba. That's great. That's, that's smashing. Um, now we've got one for the panel in general. So I'm going, I've got to read it out first of all, and I'm wondering whether um, perhaps um, Fiona or Shubega, we don't to pick this one up. So the, the question is with regarding to near me reviews in care homes um, and, and developing the guidance in and around that. 
Um, will it be specific to reviews um, of care plans for the individual or can, is there opportunity for this to be used within care reviews in the community? Um, I'm happy to, to answer that one. Thanks, Fiona. Okay, um, so as a, the, the two trials that we've had so far, one's been with a, a local authority residential home, as I said, and one's been with a private nursing home. So that's involved reviewing the, the care plans that they have. Um, as, as Shuba sort of um, said, that Glasgow has sight of some of the, the care plans and the information from the local authority home beforehand. <laughs> Hang on. Apologies, everyone. Sorry, I just realised that I'm I'm still on live and uh, Fiona's chatting. So we just need to swap the presenter view over to Fiona, and we'll be able to hear hear the reply. So sorry, Tom. Can you slide that over? Oh, sorry, you still stuck with me. <laughs> Here we go. OK, is that fine now? Um, so, yeah, the, we've used one with a, a private nursing home and one with a local authority residential home, but we actually don't get to see site of care plans or anything beforehand. So we're often going into to these with um, the reviews from the previous year or our care plans. If it's if it's an initial sort of six week review, we're going in with the, the care plans that, that we sort of of someone to introduce the person with. Um, so we're starting to use them out with the care homes now to do um, care plan reviews at home. We'll get information from the private provider um, that is providing services to the individual at home and try and incorporate the, the person and their family into that review. Um, we're looking in some cases where district nurses are really heavily involved or if community alarm call out staff are particularly involved if the person falls and presses their button or has, has issues with anxiety and presses their button for assistance quite regularly. Um, one of my colleagues has recently had one of those sort of kind of reviews for someone at home and it did involve nurse, the district nursing team, community alarm and the private provider um, and then the person and their family were able to to come in on a separate screen together. So it did involve having quite a few people logging in with different cameras. And I think there was, you know, a wee bit of to and from with getting everybody into that call and getting everything streamlined and working and just refreshing it. Um, but once that worked, it was it was really, really helpful. Um, and it would have been completely impossible to have that many people and justify them being in one room together. Um, particularly as our client group is over 65, usually significantly over 65, and many of them are shielding or, you know, sort of considering themselves to be shielding if they aren't technically, um, trying not to see too many people. So, um, yeah, it, we are planning to use it in the community um, with care planning there to, to review that and make some changes. Thank you. Is that going to pop back over to you now, Rosemary? I'm hoping so. I think so. <laughs> oh, here we are again. Yep. Um, yes, I just wanted to just add to that as well, because actually of, of the, the six Pathfinder groups, there was one um, one group up in Shetland and um, just with the, the nature of the testing, they were actually testing. Uh, they were using it for care reviews at home. And what we found that, that the learning from that particularly um, particularly about bringing a third person into a call, um, you know, ordinarily the, the process that you would go through to set it, set up a near me call in somebody's home are exactly the same as the processes that you'd be going to pull a third person into the, 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 the care home review. So it was all massively valuable learning, but equally showed just how transferable um, the processes are. So when you obviously the starting point is perhaps using it for, for um, care reviews within care homes, but actually you're layering it up as, as, as you, as, as Fiona and Richard were talking, as you spread it to, to other parts of your service, you're not starting at at you know the, the ground ground level you're you know you're literally building on on the processes that you already have Shuba I saw you you your hand up would you like to come in and, and add to that oh hang on we've just got to just got to move the presenter and um, mode over <laughs> sorry two six oh still waiting I'm just conscious of time for folk and I think we've got a chance to get Mark in just briefly um and I'm 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 wondering whether we could we could 
Is that okay, Shuba? If we if we just move on, I think you're on mute, Shuba. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. I appreciate. We've probably got lots more to speak about, and 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 there may be some mileage in having another session if we've got if we've got more themes that need to tease out. So we have done that in the past, um, and I know we're, that we're very much keen to run more webinars in the future to see, you know, what what other elements of near me can support um, uh, the, the the social work and the care home sector. Um, and again, it's really great to have seen how people have risen to the challenge that was set today and, and some really inspirational stories that, that are modeled to other services. But we, I mean, and, and also before I just hand over to Philip, because I think Tom has him queued up, I would just like to ask people to fill in the survey. It's only five questions, takes about two minutes just to get a feel for, for your experience this morning and also to find out from you what do you need to know more about near me to help you with, with rolling out? So I'm going to just check in with Tom and see if you can broadcast Philip via his phone. OK, so I, he's on the speaker now, so uh, I can just put the slides on live and hand you over to Philip. Oh, uh, hi there. Um, can you hear me OK? Um, colleagues, can somebody just let me know if you can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, good. Thank, thanks very much. So apologies, apologies for the technology. The technology's let me down this morning, so apologies for having to join you over the phone. But thank you so much for um, inviting me today. And I've been listening to the conversation this morning and listening to um, the learning and the innovation that's come out of um, both Glasgow and, and Angus. So really, really encouraging to, to, to hear the work that's going on. Uh, and the creativity and support that, that's been provided from, from the test sites. Um, I just wanted to introduce myself very, very quickly. I'm, I'm Philip Gillespie. I'm a professional social work advisor in the office of the Chief Social Work Advisor. And um, I wanted just to let you know that in January, we set up this project uh, to look at care home reviews um, uh, and to set up pilot sites. And it's a collaboration between the office of Chief Social Work Advisor and Scottish Government um, uh, the tech, the tech team, the near me team, uh, and chief social work officers, uh, and that project started in January. And, we, and as you've heard, we've got six test sites across Scotland. This is part of a bigger piece of work that um, we, chief social work officers have been asked to do around assurance visits in care homes uh, and providing reviews uh, to, to all residents across Scotland. And we see near me as a, a tool to complement existing uh, arrangements. So very much a blended learning approach to, to reviews that can be used um, to support face-to-face uh, face, uh, face -face contact as well. Um, and also people will be aware that recently there has been a policy launched around um, uh, Open with Care, which is about um, care homes open up visitation and that extends to visiting professionals. So we see Near Me as a really exciting opportunity to augment support um, and align to, to existing practice around care home reviews. And some of the examples that we've heard are, you know, near me being used in a very innovative way to support action planning or preparation of reviews um, and also bringing families in from abroad who maybe haven't participated uh, in reviews or had the opportunity to participate in reviews in, 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 in that way. And that's where technology really comes into its own. So the project, as I said, was established in January. We, we now have over 10 sites across Scotland, uh, either um, initial test sites or um, early adopters and we're really pleased about that and there's good momentum and support from our chief social work officers who really see the opportunity to use it to support care planning more generally um, and, and support our residents and our care homes who have been through so much in the last year. Just wanted to end on a couple of points um, just want to, to mention the workforce. I think it's really important to mention the workforce that are involved in this work. And actually now that they're really in the last year, the workforce have had to really adapt to, to digital solutions as part of to augment um, elements of their practice. And Near Me is a really good example of, uh, of, of how that's been done. And we're keen to hear more um, from the workforce about um, the skills they've employed and the opportunities used around innovation in this area. So, um, I think just to, fi just to, um, just to uh, finish on a point, uh, we're looking also at the learning from this project, the transferability and scale up, and where there are opportunities maybe to develop near me and other parts of social work practice into children and family services and justice. And so the learning and innovation that we've heard from today has been really 
important in informing uh, that whole process. So can I thank you um, very much for the work that you've done to make this happen, for the innovation, for the dedication and for the commitment to service users and care homes and their families uh, and the support that's been provided through this work has been really uh, inspirational and really positive. Uh, and thank you very much for sharing your experiences. Thank you. I'm going to hand back over to, to Mark. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Philip, for that. And, and uh, we, it's, we finally got you in right at the end. So that was excellent. That was, uh, <laughs> so yes, thank you. And it's been a, it's been a, a real pleasure to spend some time with, with our, our panel this morning and also with, with you as, a, as our audience. And thank you for pitching questions in. And uh, we will we will go through the Q&A's today. If there's themes coming out that, that we haven't answered in our session, we will we will follow it up um, with, a, with a follow up resource. And if there's mileage in doing some follow up webinars or Q&A sessions with panel members or supporting you to move forward, then yeah, we'll be we'll be very keen to do that. So um, I will just draw this morning to a close. Thank you again uh, for uh, persevering with our technical challenges. Everything worked in rehearsal as always. So uh, that's just one of those things. But anyway, thank you very much for joining us and hopefully we'll see you again at another webinar and goodbye. <laughs>